the next project we're going to do is a uh, prong mounted uh, faceted stone pendant. I've pre-cut the wires. We're using uh, five pieces, uh, pardon me, six pieces, five inches long, and we're using 22 gauge half hard wire. It's definitely a half hard project. I might use 21 gauge if I had a larger stone and a larger size, but uh, this should be good. Then for wrap wires, we're using the standard uh, 21 gauge, half round, half hard wrap wire. I was told early in my wire wrapping uh, career many years ago that if you could do a ring, you could do this, but not true. <laughs> this is, uh, there, there are portions of similarity, but for the most part, it's a, it's a whole different ball game. Again, we'll measure the center of the stone. And uh, like we do in the cabochon ring, we want to determine the distance between the wraps here. Uh, again, I have a formula for that. And that formula is to measure the length of the stone that you're going to, uh, uh, in the direction that you're going to mount the stone and add to that, um, in this case, I'm going to use one and one eighth inch. So in other words, my wrap, the distance between my wraps on this uh, pendant will be one and five eighths inches. Now, when I say the axis that you're going to mount the stone on, this one obviously is, is the long axis. And this is the long axis, but you could equally well measure it, uh, uh, I mean, mount it crossways. In that case, you would use the width dimension rather than the length dimension. Now, on, as far as the additive, uh, the, in my case, one and one eighth inches, I use one to one and a half inches depending on the size of the stone, the size of the stone. Uh, bear in mind that a very small change in the additive, the uh, in this case the one and a, an eighth, makes a big difference in the size of the of the uh, wings and how far they're going to come out in the finished product. So stay at the lower end, somewhere between one and uh, one eighth inches, maybe even an inch and a quarter. I think that's what I used here. Uh, and for a larger stone, then you can go on to like one and a half inches. You'll get a feel for it after you've done a number of these. Okay, I've got my center mark. I, again, I pre-cut these. They're five inches long, and uh, I cut them using progressive cutting techniques and aligned them so that they're correctly aligned. Now I take my wrap wire. I need two wrap wires, uh, roughly, um, oh, about four inches long. And I bend this back and offset it to my uh, left, as I usually do. Just comparing these to make sure they're the same size. Without measuring, I, I begin the first uh, first wrap, or I could pre-measure like I have in other projects. Put a couple of wraps on it. Just kind of judge this by eye. And now I'm going to measure from this uh, my one and five eighths inches back. Mark that. Again, the critical dimension is, uh, is 
the distance between these. As I said, I want one and five eighths, and that's what I have. Do not cut your wrap wires. Do not cut the wrap wires. Again, I'm mounting or uh, wrapping with the wire going in the opposite direction from the other one. By that I mean the tail of this wire wrap's going that way, the tail of this one's going this way. And I'll go ahead and I'll put five wraps here. As I emphasized before, we don't cut any wires now. I'm just going to shorten this one a little make it a little less cumbersome to work with. I'm going to straighten my wires now. And I can go ahead and cut the tails off of these. Actually. Okay, so here's what we have. And I want to flatten this and straighten it as much as I can. And I can go ahead and remove the tape at this point. Okay. Now then, for, uh, we're going to begin to form the prongs. And for this ring, unlike I mean, this uh, pendant, unlike the ring that we did, we're not so concerned about where the uh, culet of the stone, because it's never going to get anywhere near the skin. Uh, so that enables us to use very short prongs. So in this case, and just almost uh, for all projects, I use prongs of three eighths of an inch. So we don't even really have to measure. Again, I, uh, to form the prongs, I separate four outer wires. You'll note that I'm not quite centered here. Uh, that's because this end is going to be the bail end. This end uh, we only use to lock the stone in. And so it doesn't need to be quite so long. We don't need to have that much extra wire on this end. As we did before, we're going to create a, uh, uh, on the ring, we're going to create a pattern wire. And since I said our prongs are going to have to be three eighths of an inch long, I'll Measure that in three eighths of an inch on my ruler is twelve thirty seconds. Or three eighths. So I very accurately measure that. And cut it. There we are. Twelve thirty seconds. I can't emphasize enough now that you need to get all other short pieces of wire off your work surface. You don't want to pick up the wrong one and end up with one prong longer or shorter than the other three. So by getting everything off while you prevent that. And like I did on the uh, prong ring, we take our pattern wire, lay it adjacent to each of the four outside wires and slide it right down to the wraps. And then I take my flat nose pliers and I slide those down to the wraps and bend this out, just like that. I do that with all four uh, 
wires that we've separated. And slide it right down to the wraps. With the flat nose, slide that down adjacent to the top and bend that. As you can see, that makes our prongs very consistent in length. Okay, there we go. And then we'll just uh, bring these on over. And cut it so that it just snaps adjacent to the other wire. Okay. Now then I'll, I'll just bring these in adjacent to the uh, primary wires. I'll begin to wrap the prongs to that and I'll use four wraps here. Okay. So this is what we have, four wraps underneath, four wraps up the prongs on both sides, and uh, now and only now can you cut the wrap wires. Okay. Okay, this is where we are. This is going to be the top of the pendant with the longer wires. This is going to be the bottom. Now then, we come to the bottom of the wraps on each side and we bend them 90 degrees. And do the same on the other side. This is what we what we have. Again, the top of the pendant, the bottom. Now we separate separate each wire here, each of the outside wires. and get them out of the way. And these on this end. And I'm going to push these wires back through the uh, lower wrap. I'll start with a little shorter. Like this. Now I'm going to cut this at some length. Uh, the precaution here is to cut it. These wires are going to come up on the inside and they need to, this cut wire needs to be Uh, the cut wire needs to be longer than the wraps, which I've done here. Now I'll um, just give these a kind of a preliminary bend back through that uh, hole where I, I cut them. And up here I'll pull these wires these same two wires back through the wraps. 
You may have to bring them one at a time. And then I'm going to bend them and, and bring them up tight like that. See, they're, they're tight against the wrap wires here. And they extend just a little above the wraps, but what I want is I want them to be even with the wraps, so I'll just nibble them down here until I get them right where I want them. And that's about right. Bring them in adjacent to the wrap wires. Now I'll bring these two, same two wires on top, I'll bring them over. cut them right over the ends of the uh, two wires I've brought back up from the back. So here's what I have. Here, these are the these are long wires are the two that I cut over here and brought up through. This is the other end of the same wires through the wrap. I brought them over until they just overlay overlay that kind of covers the ends of those wires. And this acts as a spacer to keep everything equally uh, spaced down here and uh, to add rigidity to uh, the piece. Now I'm going to push these two wires up. I think. I'm going to pull these back through just a little, not, not too much. I may have to move one at a time. Just pulling on it with the flat nose. Come on, behave, wire. I don't want a lot more than that, really. It's really easy to get carried away here and get a very big. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it there, and I'm gonna bend these back out of the way like this. back to and this this will form the bale. Okay. They're out there. So now we're working with the wires that we have left to lock the stone in and uh, uh, to uh, do the piece. Now we'll make uh, the first cuts or the first uh, adjustments on the prong. And I'm using my very small flat nose here, or I could equally well use uh, my chain nose with the reference mark. This reference mark, again, it's the purpose of it is to make the prongs all very consistent in length. Get those back out of the way, too. make the first bend 90 degrees in that direction and the same reference mark the reason I'm able to use these reference marks is that my prongs are very consistent in length now then I will uh, make the second 90 degree bend I 
and opposite the first bend. Okay, so here's here's where we are now. We got made the first bend, then the second bend, and that's all we do now. We're not going to do the uh, 45 that we did on the uh, ring. Now we begin to shape this uh, to fit the stone, and I do that by just beginning to. Roll this, rolling this over. And it's kind of a trial arrangement. just slightly um, bring them back a little bit more so they support the stone a little better on the underside kind of like that Separate them a little. And uh, orient them toward the, the stone. One of the things that takes so long with these prong projects is manipulating the prongs uh, when you get the stone. you want it. And final manipulation, of course, is when you tighten everything up. Used to be a little tighter up here now. And I keep testing the uh, fit of the stone. We want a little more tension than that. We don't worry about the shape of the uh, of the wings until the end. Okay, so we'll go ahead and begin to uh, to lock the stone in place, and we do that by bringing each of these outside wires around the stone down through the center, and uh, and tightening the stone. Uh, as we roll the wires in behind it. So the way we do that is we bring these two wires out. And we want those to fit closely under the edge of the stone. 
we're going to put them in and tighten them one at a time. Otherwise, we dis will distort the setting and the stone will set crooked, like it seems to want to do right now. So I'm just going to cut part of this wire off because it's uh, in the way. And up here, on this end, I'll do the same with the other wire. And down here, if you can see, I want it to come right through that groove of the stone on both ends of the prong. They're right, right in that groove and right in this groove. So I can uh, kind of pre-shape the wires to do that. Move this one out of the way. And with my small chain nose, in this case, if I can only find them, I'll begin to roll this, this wire down through that gap. Let me move these out of the way. Down through that gap in the wires. And I'm just rolling it. Takes very little pressure to uh, to knock the stone out of place. And uh, can also very easily distort the piece. And I'll just tighten it up, not real tight. And I'll cut this end off and I'll rotate this end down through the same gap. So I've got now then I, I just gently pull on each side and I keep checking the alignment of the stone and working with these wires underneath. not only to maintain symmetry, but to, to maintain uh, the alignment of the whole piece. Now the stone is very tight right now. But I'm not entirely pleased with the way these wires are under here, so I just do some adjustments. I've said so many times, you're in charge of the wire, the wire's not in charge of you. Okay. Stone is real, real tight now. We'll tighten it up even more. Go ahead and bring this around on each side. And uh, for right now, I'm going to leave those those wires. Now we take our other two wires, and 
You could twist any of these at any point if you wanted the uh, decorative effect. I, as I've mentioned before, I don't twist a lot. I like the more pristine look of just, just the wires. So I won't do that, but I will. I'm going to bring these wires around just like I did the others on the other end. And I'm going to bring that one or each of these down through the whole one on the other end. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and clip these wires and I'll uh, straighten things out in a few minutes. And I'll cut them even shorter, but right now I want to leave just a, a little bit of room to work on this a little later. Now then, I'm going to form the bale, and uh, I do this pretty much like I did the others. This will be a rabbit ear bale. Um, come up here and bring these around on themselves, just like we did before. And I'll bend this down. So we have that on both sides. One of them I'm just going to get completely out of the way. The other one, i cut. Cut off a little bit. Now then I'll bring this wire to alignment and I will wrap that up up the bale. We're working this square wire, although it's fairly fine wire, it's not too hard to control. Done four wraps, and uh, I'll just cut it between the wraps. Now then, I'll bring the other one. I'm going to get this out of the way. First, I'm going to cut this. I'm going to bend it and cut it a little bit. That'll... Get this one out of the way and bring the other one back.
and we'll cut it between the two bales. Okay, now then, we'll form our wings. We just take the uh, back two wires and straighten them out, kind of like that. Uh, actually, I think this shape kind of complements the uh, shape of the stone. So the, the best way to shape these is, is together. Um, and the best tool is a flat nose plier. So we'll just, any place you've got a little bump or um, irregularity, you just, just lay it diagonally across and apply a little pressure. Nothing too much and we keep checking for symmetry, we want both sides to look about the same. Something like that. Now we can separate these. Like that. All right, now I want to um, piece maybe just a little skewed. And by that I think I need to make not much. It's a little better. Bear in mind that I'm not making gross adjustments here. I'm just just applying a little pressure here and there to. Yeah, that's better. And I do need to tighten these a little more. Cut them. I'm just uh, making minor adjustments here in the appearance of the thing to make uh, the wires all consistent. I can adjust the prongs a little bit. Okay. Now I would use the uh, abrasive, uh, rubberized abrasive to take the little tool marks out on the prongs. And maybe a couple of places on the wire uh, deburr and polish and then that would be our finished piece. And I've separated these so that when it's worn uh, it'll rest flat against the uh, adjacent to the clothing. Should make sure that these are the same. 
close. Maybe this one's off just a little. But you can work on a piece like this for a long time, just getting everything right. And as I said earlier, on this one I use 22 gauge because we're working with a small stone. On a larger stone I might use 21. So there it is.